Hey guys, in this episode we're going to talk about procrastination, why it's a problem and how you can overcome it in your work life. Let's get into it. Alright guys, in this episode I want to talk about procrastination. If you are a procrastinator, if you have a habit of putting off the important for later and you find it hard to focus and get stuff done in a timely fashion, then this video is going to help you. Before I get into it, don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button depending on the channel that you're listening in on or watching on. And uh, give us a like or a comment just to let us know how you're going. We put this stuff out every week and we just want to make sure that we're producing content that helps you. All right, now let's get into this procrastination. Now I'm going to admit I am a recovering procrastinator. All right, procrastination is something right throughout my college life was a, a big problem. I always put off uh, important tasks until the very last minute. You know, I remember when I was studying for my final exams, uh, I would wander around the uh, college and it was a live-in situation. I would wander around that college uh, looking for people to go to the shops with me just so I didn't have to study. Of course, everybody else was studying except me and would tell me you need to go and study, but I didn't want to study. I wanted to go to the shops and so I would find some hapless soul that I could convince to go to the shops and they would end up uh, delaying their study for my sake and I felt better about my procrastination but the problem is my work didn't go away. And you've probably found yourself in that situation where you put off things that you know are important until the very last minute then you put yourself under tremendous stress and pressure to get it done quickly or at the last minute and it often causes real problems. Now, uh, research has shown that if you are a procrastinator and you tend to do things at the last minute, while you may get things done, the quality of your work is greatly affected. And so if you want to become a more effective uh, operator in whatever field you are working in, whether I'm talking to teachers or leaders, uh, you need to learn how to manage procrastination so that it doesn't affect the quality of your output and the quality of your product. And so, first of all, let's get into why we procrastinate. What is it about procrastination that even makes it a thing? Well, it's, it's a lot of it's got to do with the way your brain functions. You see, your brain uh, has two parts to it. And it's the, the learning part and the automation part. That's the simplest way I can explain this. If you want to understand this more, read a book called uh, Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. It's a really good explanation. But basically when your brain is learning something, it has one function where it is processing information. This is hard work for your brain to learn new topics, to do something that you don't do out of habit or don't have a routine about can be really hard work. And your brain is always looking for shortcuts. Your brain is always looking for opportunities to make things speed up or automate. I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, post on Facebook where they write out a whole sentence and they take all the vowels out of the words and there's only consonants in the words but you can still read the sentence. Well that's your brain taking shortcuts with reading. Your brain has already learned that there's a whole bunch of words that it can recognize even if there's no vowels and so it would all, will automatically process those words to help you read and think faster. Okay, But before you get to that point you actually have to learn the words you have to do the hard work of memorization and that's what your brain doesn't like to do your brain doesn't like to do the hard work of learning and that's one of the reasons why we tend to procrastinate when we come up against a task or a topic or an activity that we know is not natural or is going to take some effort our brain's natural protection against stress is to say let's do this later okay because stress causes a, a great deal of um, pain to your brain, the, the um, stress hormone cortisol, it's designed to help you get out of dangerous situations, but it's also quite toxic to your body. And so uh, your brain tries to avoid stressful situations by procrastinating. And so unfortunately, what we often do is we learn this as young people and we form habits of procrastination and we learn to opt for the instant gratification versus the long term gratification. We avoid the stress in the short term. Uh, and we end up pushing that stress down the road, but it ends up still coming back and still being a problem. So, if you're at the place in your life that you want to try and deal with procrastination, you want to make it less of a thing for you, uh, I've got uh, four tips for you that have helped me, 
and uh, they are things that you'll have to keep on coming back to if you want to really overcome this well but I found them to be very very effective and the first thing is this you need to learn to remove unnecessary distractions we work in a world that is filled with distractions from our smartphone to our Facebook news feeds to the pop-ups uh, that our computers give us to the accessibility that everybody has to us by email, by phone call, by messenger, by WhatsApp, and every myriad of other communication uh, software or device. And so there's constant a constant barrage of distraction. There's a constant barrage of things that will stop you from focusing on what you need to do. Now, Tim Ferriss has written a brilliant book on this called Four Hour Work Week. Absolutely changed the way that I looked at my work week. And one of the number one things he says in that is turn off your notifications. Get rid of your distractions. When you are working, don't leave multiple tabs open. You know, how many of you have 20 tabs open on your computer and you flick between Facebook and what you're doing? Well, what you've got to do is if you want to become more efficient and let, um, procrastinate less, get rid of all your tabs, get rid of all your notifications, turn them off so that you can just focus on the task that is at hand. Most new computers actually have a uh, function where you can actually zoom the, the window in that you're working on and it removes all the other distractions on the page. It removes the, the top uh, you know, battery bar or the bottom task bar and everything else and just creates a full screen of what you're focusing on. Something like that can be really helpful. Turn off the notifications of your email. You do not need notifications on your email. This was a game changer for me. I did this six years ago and I haven't looked back. You don't actually need to check your email more than a couple of times a day. You'll still see everything that's important and you will find that those incessant dings and red dots on your phone will actually make you less productive because you'll just go down rabbit holes of emails that you don't even need to read. So turn off the notifications on your emails, turn off the notifications on Facebook and Twitter and all of your social medias so that when you are working, that you, you have less distraction and you are more focused on what you are doing. If you are in an environment where there's lots of distractions, so there's people that distract you, maybe you work from home, a lot of people are doing that now because of COVID, get into a place where you have less distraction, where you don't have people coming and asking you to do stuff, you don't have TV going on, you don't have the radio or YouTube or other noise going on, get in a place where there's less distraction and you will be more focused. All right, that's the first tip. The second thing is this, you need to tackle one task at a time. Uh, researchers at Stanford University have shown quite uh, definitively that our brain does not multitask. Okay, I know there's an old adage that says that women can multitask and men can't. Well, here's the thing. None of us multitask. What our brain does is work sequentially. And between each task that we think about or give attention to, the brain has uh, a switching time between those tasks. So every time we have to do multiple things, our brain takes time to switch in its focus and to catch up with what the new task is. Uh, now with women, what, what the thing is, why we say that they can multitask better is what happens is they're much quicker at switching. That's a whole other conversation because women can switch between left and right brain much quicker. So it appears that they can multitask. They're not multitasking, they're still working sequentially, but they just do it a lot more efficiently. Now, either way, if you pick one task to work on and do it to its completion before you start another task, what you will find is that you eliminate that switching time and make yourself more productive and more efficient. By having multiple things on the go, multiple projects on the go that you keep on switching between, you are going to make yourself far less efficient and what could take you an hour to do will end up taking you five hours just because you didn't focus, you didn't remove distractions and you didn't prioritize one task at a time. All right, so number three is this, use a timer. If this is hard for you to do, I know for many of the younger generation that I work with, millennials and Gen Zs that I have working on my team or working in my church and I've you know worked with in education systems as well, uh, many of the younger generation find it really hard to um, stay focused for long periods of time. They just have grown up in a world with lots of distractions and so they'll often have YouTube running in the background while they're working or they'll have 
their Snapchat popping up while they're working and this causes a huge amount of distractions. And so to ask them to do one task at a time and remove distractions, what ends up happening is they become very uncomfortable with the silence. And maybe you're like that, you become very uncomfortable with the lack of distraction. Well, here's how you do it. If you wanna focus for long periods of time or train yourself how to do it, you've gotta set yourself a timer for work. So figure out a time that you can focus for for a reasonable amount of time. A good starting point is your age plus three minutes. Okay, and so let's say you're 17 years old, uh, you would have 17 minutes plus three, which is 18, 19, 20. So 20 minutes, set yourself a timer and say, I'm gonna work with no distractions on one task for 20 minutes. When that timer goes off, give yourself a break. Okay, and we'll talk about breaks in a moment. Let's say you're 25, give yourself 25 minutes plus three minutes and set yourself a timer and work for that period of time. What happens is if you caught my last video on Parkinson's law, when you set a time limit to your work, you become more focused and more efficient. Your brain understands that when there are time limits and time constraints on your work, it tends to focus harder. So by having a timer on your phone saying, okay, in 20 minutes, I'm gonna give myself a break, but until that time, no distractions, you will actually find yourself becoming more efficient. So that's number three, is use a timer. And the last one, which I've already alluded to, is give yourself a break. So once you break down your workload into blocks of time, what you can do is give yourself a regular break. Now that doesn't mean go and have a break for 30 minutes. Give yourself a five minute break. Get up, take a walk around, uh, go and get a coffee, do something just to break the pattern because you've got to reward yourself for focusing. Your brain loves reward. And so if, it, if you give it a reward for focusing, at the end of your 25 minutes, you say, well done, I focused for 25 minutes, I'm gonna get myself a coffee. Your brain knows the next time that you set yourself a task, it's going to get a reward. And so it will have a tendency to work more efficiently because it understands there is a reward at the end. So give yourself regular breaks. Don't try and work for three, four, five hours at a time. What you will probably find if you break down those times when you've worked for long periods of time, you'll probably found the actual work you got done was much less than the time that you took to do it. Uh, in between, you took breaks anyway. You jumped on Facebook, you looked at a YouTube video, you took a walk around. And so if you just plan for your breaks, you'll actually find that you waste less time taking unnecessary breaks and you get more focused and more efficient in the way that you work. So those are the four tips that I found have helped me as a procrastinator. Really important, if you wanna up the quality of your work and how you operate, you need to deal with procrastination. And see, there you go, there's a distraction that I've got. My phone is going while I'm talking to you and that is something that I should have turned off before. So what a great example of that. Um, but you need to remove distractions. You need to do one thing at a time. You need to set yourself time limits based around your ability to focus and keep upping that time as you get better at it and give yourself regular breaks and reward when you do focus and you will become less of a procrastinator and more efficient in your workload. I hope that was really helpful. My name's Tarun Stevenson. Make sure you uh, give us a share. Hey, if you're listening on our podcast, we'd love for you to give us a review because that helps us to get up in the algorithm rankings for Apple podcasts and uh, so if you're enjoying our content please stop and give us a review that would be much much appreciated and uh, if you're on any of our social channels like youtube facebook instagram make sure you uh, follow the channel and uh, give one of our other channels a look as well because we're on other channels and uh, we'd love to see you over there so until next time i'm tarun stevenson stop procrastinating